its final combustion form, Porsche's Macan continues to be an SUV with the soul and the engineering of a sports car. You might expect it to be fast and family friendly. More of a surprise is that it's rewarding and with the right spec, very nearly race ready in its responses. Yet it'll comfortably take you off road, deal with the school run and cruise down to Chamonix. It's very special, especially in this improved form. So here we are at the end of an era. The last update for Porsche's combustion-engined Macan, a mid-sized SUV model that in the last decade has sold well enough to pay for the electric development that will soon make fossil fueled versions of it obsolete. But not yet. So, at the wheel of a 2022 model year Macan, let's enjoy this car one last time, as it was always meant to be. It's certainly been a success story, despite being an SUV made by a sports car company and one originally developed from the unpromising underpinnings of a first generation Audi Q5. Over 600,000 Macans have been sold since the original launch in 2014, 60% to women and 80% for owners new to the brand. Sales stats don't get a lot more significant than that. There was a major upgrade in 2018, then a final update three years later to create the last of the line version we're trying here for our test in spring 2022. This will sell alongside the new full electric Macan Porsche, will launch in 2023 before fossil fuel Macans gradually get phased out in 2024. So, should you grab the opportunity to fuel your Macan while you can, or wait for a new era electric one? Well, that won't be a hard decision to make if you enjoy your driving. Any future EV Macan will be an impressive device. Porsche's Taycan series has shown us that, but that full battery Macan will carry a huge amount more weight than this one, and of course will be limited in how far you can drive it between charges. So, the Zuffenhausen faithful, people who'd ideally like a Porsche sports car but need five doors and a decent boot, will continue to love the Macan just as it already is. And they'll choose it right at the end of its production run, safe in the knowledge that it's still the finest handling SUV out there. Porsche has been making sporting all-wheel drive cars for over a century and they further perfected this one with a shuffling of the powertrain pack some light visual updates and a few well-chosen cabin improvements, all creating the car that we're going to try here as part of the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. Let's give you the driver oriented headlines first with this final combustion Macan update. These don't take long to cover. A small power increase for the four-cylinder, two-litre base model, also now available in more focused Macan T form. The mid-range Macan S ditches its three-litre V6 for the old turbo model's 2.9-litre V6 unit, and that old turbo variant gets rebadged as the Macan GTS, the car we're trying here, which matches the old turbo model's 440 PS output, but adds in standard lowered sports air suspension. All variants get an optimised chassis with more responsive steering and the PASM adaptive damping system you'll almost certainly want has been sharpened too. So, more power, sharper handling and sophisticated damping, all of which we'll brief you on more fully later in this section. But premium mid-sized SUV rivals to this car will also promise you all of those things. So what makes the Macan different? To understand that, you have to really drive the thing with conviction and maybe also understand a little more about Porsche's goals in creating it. Lots of unlikely models have been described as sports cars over the years. It's always been hard, though, to imagine an SUV in that way. Or at least it was until Porsche launched the original version of this Macan back in 2014. It was a car that redefined the way an SUV could drive and eight years into its production cycle, it still does, thanks to a series of dynamic tweaks aimed at further underlying this contender's claim to be the sports car of the SUV segment. Of all brands, Porsche should know just what a claim that is to make about a model that weighs 
nearly two tonnes, is over 1.6 metres in height and must be engineered to tackle the Rubicon Trail as well as the racetrack. If you've driven the company's larger KN SUV, you'll know that an awful lot is possible with this kind of car, but inevitably there are always limits. With the Macan, Porsche was always determined to stretch them and create the ultimate multitasker. A car as ready for a circuit as it would be for a skiing trip, classy enough for the streets of Monte Carlo, soundly sensible on the school run, quietly capable on the rough stuff and potentially manic around Monza. The company is certainly well placed to create such a thing, claiming the whole sporting all-wheel drive car concept as its own invention. Back in 1900, Ferdinand Porsche designed the Lona Porsche racing model with its four electric wheel hub motors. By 1947, the brand was going further, developing a supercharged 12-cylinder type 360 Sissistalia Grand Prix racer that introduced the concept of full four-wheel drive. For all that, though, the Stuttgart maker had never made a car quite like this prior to this model's original arrival. Perhaps that's why a decade and a half ago, at the beginning of McCann development, it initially turned to Volkswagen Group partner Audi with the early idea of basing this car on that company's similarly sized Q5. It wasn't long into the development process, though, before Porsche decided it knew better. It alone could create the kind of mid-sized sporting SUV that rival brand models could never be. So almost everything was reinvented, almost everything was reimagined, almost everything was different, as this car still is from just about everything else in its segment. To drive, it's not quite like a premium powerful all-wheel drive hot hatch, say a Volkswagen Golf R or an Audi S3, but it's closer to that than the cars you might think to be more obvious rivals, not only its cousin, the Audi Q5, but also sportier mid-sized crossovers like the Alfa Romeo Stelvio and the BMW X4. The change is that significant. Independent track tests have seen the fastest versions of this Macan record circuit lap times only a fraction slower than Porsche's mid-engined 718 Cayman sports car. Try doing that in any other SUV. With this in mind, you can now begin to see why, during the Macan's original development, Porsche's engineers were so disinterested in simply rebadging the Audi Q5 that was always supposed to form the development basis for this car. No matter what you do to a Q5, and Audi has certainly tried hard with the SQ5 variant, it's never going to be any kind of sports car. To create the Macan, stiffer, sharper and faster reacting underpinnings were needed. Take the four-wheel drive system. The Audi Quattro setup that Porsche could easily have used is mechanical and from Zuffenhausen's perspective doesn't react quickly enough. The Macan's PTM or Porsche traction management setup in contrast is electronic and in less than the blink of an eye can switch up to 100% of torque from front to rear. It's one of the key reasons why this car is so responsive. Of course, there are plenty of others, with many of the engineering elements that make this car so great enhanced in small but significant ways to create the improved model we're trying here. As we said at the beginning, quite a lot's gone on beneath the bonnet with this last round of updates, with more power added across the range, even for the entry-level 2-litre model, which gets a 20 PS boost to 265 PS. This is a turbo engine that must be revved out to do its best work. Peak power isn't actually delivered until you get to 5,000 revs, by which time, if you've stormed off from rest, 62 miles an hour will be flashing by. The official sprint time is now 6.4 seconds, which you can reduce by a couple of tenths by specifying the optional Sport Chrono Pack. This adds a launch control system to the seven-speed paddle shift PDK auto gearbox that all McCanns have to have. Top speed is now 144 miles an hour. If you're looking at a two-litre McCann and thinking of adding the PASM or Porsche Active Suspension Management adaptive damping system into the mix, it's worth considering the alternative variant with this four-cylinder engine 
the McCann T, which comes with PASM as standard, along with a package of more focused dynamic tweaks, a 15mm ride height reduction, stiffer front axle anti-roll bars, an adapted PTM or Porsche traction management setup, and even more careful chassis tuning for suspension, powertrain and steering. All of this might even create a variant representing the handling sweet spot in the range, given that the four-cylinder models weigh 58.8 kilos less than their faster V6 counterparts on the front axle. That makes the lower capacity McCann's a little more agile and lighter on their feet. Yes, you'll have a lot less power with the two-litre models, which of course will make you slower down the straights. But when you reach the corners, you'll be able to brake later and turn quicker, which on fast point-to-point -point roads makes it slightly easier to find a driving rhythm. For all of that, though, there are still quite a few customers who will look at the fact that a four-cylinder 265 PS Macan T and a V6 380 PS Macan S are virtually the same price and think it a no-brainer to upgrade themselves to the higher capacity variant. As we mentioned earlier, the mid-range S has undergone a heart transplant as part of this final set of revisions, swapping its previous 354 PS 3 litre V6 for a 380 PS version of the 2.9 litre Audi sourced V6 that used to be the preserve of the now deleted top turbo model. That delivers as much performance as a McCann owner could reasonably want. Rest to 62 miles an hour in just 4.6 seconds on the way to 161 miles an hour, or to the accompaniment of a rather potent sounding growl-like whine. If though you must have the ultimate McCann, you'll head directly to the version we're trying here, the GTS. We implied earlier that this GTS was merely a rebadged version of the previous turbo variant. That's not quite true. Porsche claims to have made quite a few software and algorithm changes to alter the nature of the power delivery you get with this model. But the fact remains that the 440 PS 2.9 litre V6 engine hasn't really changed, nor has its storming performance. Rest to 62 miles an hour is dispatched in just four and a half seconds on route to 169 miles an hour. Unless you set off as if you've just stolen a boot full of bullion, the car to start with doesn't really feel that fast, and there aren't too many aural fireworks unless you've paid extra for the sports exhaust. Start to press on a bit though, and this McCann really rips up through the revs, simply hurling itself at the horizon. The twin clutch PDK gearbox offers smooth, sharp changes, but for full involvement, you'll need to seek out the transmission's manual hold buttons now across the range, resituated on the steering wheel, so you can activate the perfectly positioned silver steering wheel paddle shifters. As part of the switch from turbo to GTS badging, Porsche has decided that air suspension should be standardised here at the top of the lineup. The bespoke developed version of that damping setup used here is called GTS Sports Air Suspension and it comes with a 10mm ride height reduction. It's entirely possible that you might find this arrangement somewhat over firm, especially with the big 21 inch wheel rims that this top version has to have. If that's your perspective, and we found it to be hours after a few sessions crashing over speed humps on the school run, there's the no cost option of switching to the normal air suspension setup without the ride height reduction, which might well be our preference. Either way, as with the ordinary steel sprung PASM adaptive damping system we referenced earlier, you get separately selectable damping settings. Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus activated via this haptic button next to the gear stick. That's actually quite unusual, damping settings usually being packaged up with drive modes on modern cars these days, which can make it difficult to get, say, sharp throttle response with a comfortable ride. Here you can mix and match things much better in combination with four available tarmac drive settings, normal, sport, sport plus and individual, all accessible either via the centre screen or through twisting this rather cheap feeling rotary dial on the steering wheel. 
whatever power plant and suspension setup you decide upon, as mentioned earlier, there are handling treats in store should you find yourself alone on your favourite twisting back road or perhaps at Porsche's handling track at Silverstone, a session at which is open to you as a mechanic customer. The fizzing feedback you get through the 911 derived steering wheel and the remarkable lack of lean through each bend together give you such confidence that you can attack each turn almost as hard as you want. You simply set up for the bend, turn in, plant your foot and power through in a way that will be further enhanced if you fitted the car out with the brand's optional PTV Plus or Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus system. This works through the twisty stuff to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. As a result, the car's kept planted through the tightest turn and you're fired on from bend to bend. If you're driving like this, then you'll certainly want to have activated this center console sport button. This quickens the throttle response, adds a sportier engine note and speeds up the gear shift timings. Should you have opted for the Sport Chrono package we referenced earlier, a more effective tool is provided in the shape of a central Sport Response button embedded in the steering wheel drive mode dial we just mentioned. Press that and for 20 seconds you get a short-term blast of engine response that will be useful in tight overtaking manoeuvres. Talking of that drive mode dial, we did previously brief you on four drive mode settings. Actually, there are five, the fifth one being an off-road option. That will, of course, be completely redundant for 95% of likely owners, despite encouraging looking off-piste approach and departure angles of 24.8 degrees and 23.6 degrees. Oh, and a ramp angle of 16.9 degrees. You might, though, conceivably be stuck in a muddy car park with your McCann or be stranded in a snowy snap or simply want to tow something, in which case engaging the off-road setting might be useful. It works at up to 50 miles an hour and switches all of the relevant systems, things like gear shift speeds, clutch pre-tensioning, throttle response and torque split, to a traction-orientated off-road program. For descent of steep slopes, there's also the PHC, or Porsche Hill Control System, a copy of Land Rover's hill descent control setup in the way it can automatically keep your speed constant down slippery inclines. You'll be even better set for rougher terrain if your McCann has the air suspension system we mentioned earlier fitted. It's optional on all lower range models because with that in place, the adaptive springs will automatically adjust your ride height to suit the terrain level. Or you can manually select a high level one option that will push the car up 40 millimeters higher than the usual normal setting. This makes all the difference, upping the potential ground clearance from the standard 205 millimetres to as much as 230 millimetres. So you can make the most of all of this. There's a downloadable off-road precision app which gives McCann drivers the chance to document, analyse and even film the off-road journeys they will almost certainly never take. But of course, you're about as likely to see a McCann being used seriously off-road as you are to see an elephant flying over your house. More likely alternative habitats for this car, when it's not being thrown about on twisting secondaries, lie with congested highways and the urban commute. Both environments it'll be better equipped to conquer if you specify this model's useful traffic jam assist setup which can take over steering and throttle duties in slow-moving traffic at up to 40 miles an hour. That's about as close as this Porsche currently gets to any degree of autonomous driving, and quite right too. A McCann is a driver's car. It always has been and always should be. It's no secret that Porsche has struggled since the turn of the century to translate its brand values into the styling of an SUV. With the original Macan, though, the visual balance of sports car and crossover was much better resolved. So much so, in fact, that the brand has clearly been reticent about changing things too much when it came to this improved 2022 model year design. Feeling confident enough, as at the 2018 update, to restrict visual tinkering to stylistic 
updates that could be achieved without the huge retooling costs required for alterations to the basic body in white. Which is fine because market evidence suggests that the McCann's core customers like this car very much as it always was. Familiar brand styling cues are plentiful and are far less contrived than used to be the case with larger Porsche SUVs with references not only to the KN and the 911 but also to the Stuttgart makers supercars past and present. Take the distinctive wraparound clamshell bonnet unique in this segment fashioned from pure aluminium and stretching through to the wheel arches while aiming to create the same kind of broad and powerful front end presence that characterised Porsche's Le Mans winning 917 race machine. You'd really need to see old and new McCann models together to appreciate the changes made to this updated model year 2022 version. But actually there are plenty, perhaps the most significant one being the adoption of this redesigned nose section, which adds a lot more black plastic, wrapping itself from the corners to frame the lower section of a grille that now has an even more prominent central assist camera. We're not at all sure that this is an improvement, especially on this top GTS model, which does without the body-coloured front-end inserts that break up this mustachioed visage further down the range. On all variants, the situation isn't helped by the fact that one of the veins has been removed from each of the corner outlets, the intakes now revealing radiators that would probably be better unseen. Still, the full LED headlights still look smart with their four LED ice cube style design motif and they now gain, as standard, the brand's Porsche dynamic light system. Not much has changed in profile apart from the adoption of these sleeker sport design exterior mirrors and restyled wheels which now vary in size from 19 to 21 inch rims that we have here. As ever with a McCann the panel work is very Porsche with design creases accentuating the broad sculpted wings the idea being that from this angle every muscle appears to be flexed like a predator ready to pounce. That's aided by the way that in an effort to improve stability and traction this McCann gets wider tyres at the rear just like the brand's 911 model. As before, roof rails are extra, but you do get these smart branded black side blades along the flanks, reminiscent of those on the brand's exotic 918 hybrid hypercar, blades which now can be ordered with what Porsche calls a technical 3D finish. And the roof line slopes distinctively down towards the rear in a sports car style contour that aids the slippery shape. In Zuffenhausen, they call this the Porsche fly line. The rear now gets more overtaken presence, appropriate since this is the perspective other motorists are most likely to get as you blast by. This new lower diffuser is a big visual improvement, well on this top GTS version anyway, it doesn't work quite as well with the less prominent exhaust fitted to the 2 litre models. As before, stylist Michael Mauer's original design remains embellished by this smart three-part LED light panel that connects the two tail light clusters and showcases Porsche lettering in three-dimensional script that's almost indecipherable when the LEDs are lit and the whole thing illuminates like a lightsaber as you lock the car at night. Otherwise things are much as before with Mauer's original idea having been to create a car that looks low, wide and intimate with the road. The style is slender at the top but then widens into the broad shoulders that sit above the back wheels. This apparently a homage to the brand's iconic 911 model. But as usual, what's more important is what lies underneath the aesthetics. And what lies beneath them, Barstool experts will doubtless tell you, are the underpinnings of a much humbler Audi Q5, the shortcut Porsche supposedly used in creating the original version of this model. Don't believe it. Yes, this McCann does still borrow around 30% of its components from the old first generation Q5, mainly the front and rear differentials and the suspension arms, but that's to be expected given Porsche's current day positioning as part of the Volkswagen Group.
All the stuff that really matters, though, is quite different. This car is longer, lower and wider than its Audi cousin, and every body panel is unique, as is the basic platform, the four-wheel drive system and much of the engine wear. The Macan was certainly always very different at the wheel, not only from a Q5, but from every other SUV rival. Is it still? Absolutely. Once the door thunks shut and you take a look around, the feeling you get is less like that of a sporting SUV and more like what you'd experience in a thoroughbred sports estate, say a Mercedes AMG C63 or an Audi RS4. The whole soul of a sports car thing might be a difficult concept to swallow from the outside, but you sense it keenly here at the wheel, thanks to the way the low set seat and this high center console create such a cockpit style feel. The changes made to this last of the line model won't be difficult to spot if you've owned a recent Macan. The rows of little buttons that used to flank the gear stick on the flight deck like center console have now been replaced by sleek, shiny, haptic switch panels surrounding a redesigned shifter. A change which makes this interior feel a great deal more modern. These panels, like the Porsche Communications Management Center screen just above, stay dark until you power up, something you do by inserting the brand's usual car-shaped key into an ignition socket rather than by merely pressing a button. That betrays the age of this design, as does the fact that through the new 911 sourced three-spoke sports steering wheel, you don't view a completely digital instrument binnacle, though like us, you might think that to be rather a good thing. This classic three-tube instrument layout is so distinctively Porsche, with the rev counter, as usual with this brand, assuming central pride of place. The analog speedo lies to the left, while to the right, what you might at first assume to be a supplementary dial, is in fact a 4.8-inch colour screen, which displays phone, audio, trip, computer, four-wheel drive, tyre pressure and stopwatch readouts, but more colourfully, can also bring sat-nav mapping directly into your line of sight. If you've ticked the box for the optional Sport Chrono package, there's a lovely analog and digital stopwatch on top of the dash. And the quality of the trim very much suits a car of this order, with lovely leathers, perfect plastics and very nice stitching for the dash top and door pulls that all complement the granite-like build quality from the Leipzig factory. The grey stitched Alcantara finishing we have here is the perfect final touch. There's impressive attention to detail too. For example, the beautiful positioning of the silver paddle shifters for the PDK auto gearbox that all Macan models must have. And the fact that the supporting plate and guide rails of the front armrest are fashioned from high-tech magnesium. Earlier, we mentioned the central PCM or Porsche communications management infotainment screen. That arrived as part of the 2018 model year update to replace the tiny seven inch monitor that McCann owners were previously stuck with, and it still works well. Using predefined tiles, users can easily create a home screen with their preferred functions, then quickly switch them about using the usual pinch and swipe technology, all the while enjoying crystal clear graphics that only Mercedes can match. A screen panel to the right helps you quickly find regularly accessed functions, but we'd still prefer the kind of separate capstan controller by the gear stick that you'd find in, say, a rival BMW X3. As it is, you're often rather over-reliant on voice control, though that system here is now a little more intuitive than before. A standard part of the PCM setup is the brand's Connect Plus module, which gives you online navigation, 4G LTE phone compatibility, wireless internet access, a Porsche vehicle tracking system, and a wide range of compatible apps, including remote services, and one that, amongst other things, allows you to send and receive journey destinations. That Porsche Connect app is compatible with Apple and Android phones, but Unfortunately, the PCM setup's integrated smartphone mirroring capability isn't, so if you can't use Apple CarPlay, you'll be a bit stuck. You do get a standard 10-speaker hi-fi sound system with digital signal processing, but its output is limited to 150 watts. 
This infotainment setup features a proper physical rotary volume knob, something you can reach for and find without taking your eyes off the road, as was the case with the old switches that used to surround the gear stick. You can't do the same thing with these new haptic switch panels, which deal with ventilation functions in their upper sections and drive features in their lower ones. Either way, you have to look down and figure out the function you want, which we can't help thinking to be a bit of a retrograde step. True, the old switch panels were less attractive and tended to feature loads of blanked off buttons for features you hadn't specified, but they work well and were easy to use, something you can remind yourself about here, because the same kind of old style switch rows still feature in this overhead console. The other issues here aren't really deal breakers. You have to shell out a four figure sum for an optional comfort package if you want these front seats fitted with lumbar support. Without it, they lack lower back support. There's a bit of a bulge in the transmission tunnel, which skews your left leg over a little. And though frontward visibility is better than you'd expect given the low set positioning, the high rear window compromises your rearward vision. So it's just as well that all round parking sensors are standard. What else? Well, there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses, though a lower cubby shaped for them sits below the haptic panels. Premium segment etiquette that usually insists on a lid for this twin cup holder compartment between the seats has been ignored and the door bins won't quite take a one litre bottle. This stowage box further back between the seats is a bit shallow, though it does usefully incorporate SIM, SD card and twin USB-C ports. The big glove box has a pen clip and can be cooled and there's a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor. Time to see how this model stacks up in the rear. Now, it's an issue that's of greater importance, and you might at first think, given that a significant number of potential buyers, Porsche thinks, will be people considering this car as a more dynamic alternative to a larger but similarly priced sporting SUV from the next class up, maybe a Range Rover Sport or a BMW X5. This was one of the reasons why the brand didn't introduce this McCann model line sooner than 2014. There was an understandable fit that it was steel sales from the larger KN. So, if you're the sort of family person who might otherwise choose a big luxury SUV with sporting pretensions, will your family castigate you for cramming them into a McCann? Probably not. You'd certainly notice a bit less space for sure, but head and knee room's acceptable, helped by these scallop seat backs. Three adults could certainly fit for short to medium journeys, provided the unfortunate middle seat occupant didn't mind splaying their legs around this extremely high centred transmission tunnel. Rear cabin space is one area in which this car is pretty much the same as an Audi Q5, which isn't surprising given that its wheelbase is identical. Well, nearly identical anyway. Unfortunately, McCann buyers don't get that car's sliding rear bench, something that would have been a real boon here. You can't recline the seat backs either. So you'll have to shelve thoughts of seating configurability and instead content yourself with admiring the quality, things like the stitched leather door pulls, embellished here with lovely grey stitched Alcantara and the smart climate adjustability built into the twin central vents. Porsche hasn't forgotten to provide overhead reading lights, plus you get a couple of cup holders in this central armrest and coat hooks on the B pillar and grab handles. It seems a bit mean to charge extra for seat back pockets though. OK, let's have a look out back where the standard automatic tailgate rises to reveal a 500 litre cargo bay. The sloping rear end means that this is a 50 litre reduction on what you'd get in that comparable Audi Q5. And it'll certainly be a lot less than you're used to if you're downsizing from one of the larger sporting SUVs we just mentioned. But the area provided is usefully square shaped and will easily accommodate a couple of really large suitcases if need be. You might struggle a little to get them in though. This rather impractical decorative shiny stainless steel panel highlights what is quite a high loading lip, though that'll be less of an issue if you've got a McCann fitted with air suspension, which via this right hand switch panel allows you to lower the rear end by 50 millimeters if you've heavy items to get in and out. 
Porsche hasn't forgotten to include a 12 volt socket back here and you get the usual bag hook and four tie down points plus this netted area here on the right. There's a useful underfloor compartment though if wisely you pay extra for a spare wheel most of this space will be taken up. Annoyingly there won't be room for that extra wheel if you've gone for the Bose surround sound system audio upgrade which has to have this lower mounted subwoofer. That right-hand switch panel we mentioned earlier also has buttons for the electrically extending tow bar if you fitted it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have switches for retracting the rear seat backs and there are no cargo sidewall catches to do so either. So you've got to stretch for these awkward to reach seat back shoulder catches, which won't be easy if the parcel shelf is in place. At least the rear backrest folds in a useful 40-20-40 split, which means you can poke through things like skis without disturbing rear seat passengers. And push the rear bench completely forward and a 1500 litre capacity is freed up. That's class competitive if your point of comparison is with the Audi Q5 segment mid-sized SUVs. There are now three levels to a McCann range that for some time now has been exclusively petrol powered. We'll quote prices applicable at the time of this test in spring 2022. Things kick off at a fraction under £50,000 for the standard two litre model, now with 265 PS. The next level up takes you up to around £54,000 and gives you a choice of power plants, either the same two litre unit with a more focused handling setup in the McCann T or the top 2.9 litre V6 engine in a 380 PS state of tune in the McCann S. If you can stretch to around £66,000, you can get yourself the flagship McCann GTS derivative that we're trying here. A 440 PS 2.9 litre V6 variant that's basically a repackaged version of the old top turbo model. By that point, though, you'll find this car seriously overlapping into the kind of pricing that could also buy you the brand's larger KN SUV, which in entry level 340 PS form costs around £63,000 as a standard SUV or £67,000 in coupe guys. If it's a McCann you really want, then you'll find that, as is usual in this segment, all variants in the range get auto transmission, a seven speed PDK set up with steering wheel paddle shifters. On to the value proposition that Porsche's pricing represents and the competition this car faces. And in rough terms, if you think in terms of McCann being a mid-sized SUV pitched at full-sized SUV pricing, you won't be too far out. The mid-sized models, you might normally think you'd rank against it. Comparable versions of cars like Alfa Romeo's Stelvio, the Jaguar F-Pace or an upper-spec Range Rover Evoque are all about £10,000 less. We think it less likely that a potential McCann buyer would consider even sportily trimmed versions of less dynamically inclined models in this class, like the Audi Q5, the Mercedes GLC or the Volvo XC60, but the same applies there. Basically, there aren't going to be that many McCanns, even two-litre models, leaving the showroom for much less than around £55,000. And for that, you can start thinking about lower-order versions of large-segment luxury SUVs like BMW's X5 and the Mercedes GLE. Though, again, that's unlikely because they don't have the agility and handling purity of a McCann. A much closer match can be found with a car priced almost precisely against this Porsche, the Range Rover Velar. The Solihull product is slightly more spacious and better off-road, but rather less agile and rewarding. Your call. If you want other credible alternatives and you happen to be looking at spending around £55,000 on the mid-range McCann S, we'd point you towards two particular V6 rivals, both priced similarly and offering around 350 horsepower. For around the same money as the McCann S, there's the Mercedes AMG GLC 43, and for only around £4,000 more, you could have a BMW X3 M40i. But we think that both of these cars would struggle to keep a well-driven McCann in sight at speed on a twisty road. 
If you're looking at spending around 66000 on this 440 PS Macan GTS and you've done your segment homework, you may be feeling quite pleased with yourself. Yes, the obvious super high performance mid-sized SUV alternatives offer quite a lot more power, but they're considerably more expensive. They don't really go much faster and they certainly wouldn't be able to pull away from a well-driven Macan GTS on a track or a twisting secondary road. Indeed, some of them might well struggle to keep up. The models in question start with the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio offering 517 PS, which costs around £75,000. Then there's the Jaguar F-Pace SVR with 550 PS, which costs around 78,000. The BMW X3 M with 517 PS, which costs around 85,000. And the Maserati Levante Medina S with 436 PS, which costs around 90,000 pounds. Plus, at the time of this test, Mercedes was still selling the first generation 63 AMG V8 version of its first generation GLC with 517 PS for around 95,000 pounds. All of which is good news if it's the Porsche key fob you really want. And if so, you'll be needing to know just how generous the brand has been when it comes to standard spec. Have compromises been made in order to keep McCann prices relatively affordable? Not really. Let's start with what you get on the entry-level 2-litre model and build from there. Like all McCann's, that base version gets a sport option which sharpens throttle response and an off-road button that tailors drive characteristics to better suit off-tarmac trails. Beyond that, standard McCann features across the range include full LED headlamps with the PDLS or Porsche Dynamic Light System, which gives you cornering lights and auto high beam. You also get an automatic tailgate, LED tail lights, auto headlamps and wipers, front and rear parking sensors and an alarm. There are also sport design power folding exterior mirrors, side blade panels in textured lava black and wheel sizes depend on the variant you choose. You can expect 19 inches for the standard Macan. Inside the base model, there are comfort spec seats trimmed in a combination of leatherette and sport tech fabric and featuring heating and eight-way electrical adjustment on the driver's side. There's also three-zone automatic climate control, a 40-20-40 split rear bench, an analogue clock on the dashboard, an ambient lighting package, a pollen filter and cruise control with a speed limiter. The multifunction steering wheel has buttons that activate the Porsche Communication Management infotainment setup, a 10.9 inch screen that comes complete with navigation, voice control, internet capability, Bluetooth phone connectivity, and a sound package plus 10 speaker, 150 watt DAB hi fi audio system. There's standard Apple CarPlay, smartphone mirroring, though not Android Auto and an included Connect Plus module with LTE and 4G phone connectivity, Wi-Fi capability and an integrated SIM card. You get some really clever connectivity technology too. There are Car Finder and Porsche Vehicle Tracking System Plus services that'll let you know where your Macan is at all times, though a subscription payment is required. And a downloadable Porsche Connect app for Apple and Android phones gives you a wide variety of digital features and services, including a remote vehicle status feature, via which you'll be able to check vital data, such as door locking and fuel range, from your phone. The navigation system is able to process so-called swarm data via its risk radar service, which anonymously captures data about traffic and road conditions from vehicles with relevant equipment. That could mean your McCann will know in advance about fog, skidding risks and road accidents, adapting its systems and navigational inputs accordingly. There are also 20 further apps available for this car. We like the Finder app, which allows you to find destinations of almost any kind in seconds. A covered car park rather than an open one, for example, if it's pouring down and you don't want to step out into the rain. Then there's the off-road precision app, which provides you with helpful tips for driving off-road. 
OK, that's covered everything you get on a base two-litre McCann. Why might you want to pay around £4,000 more and get the same power plant in the next model up, the McCann T? Well, the big draw with that variant is the standard fitment of PASM, or Porsche Active Suspension Management Adaptive Damping, which comes with a 15mm body height reduction. This more focused 2-litre McCann variant also gets its own look with larger dark titanium 20-inch wheels and design elements painted in agate grey metallic for painted front trim elements, the exterior mirrors, the side blades, the roof spoiler and the logos on the rear. There's high gloss black finishing for the sports tailpipes and the side window trims and the side blade feature the McCann T logo in black. Inside the McCann T, there's upholstery based on Porsche's black leather package. The centres of the front seats and the outer rear seats feature a sport tech stripe pattern. And the front headrests each have an embossed Porsche crest. The contrasting colour from the exterior continues inside the vehicle in the form of decorative silver stitching on the seats, headrests and steering wheel. Standard McCann T equipment also includes a multi-function GT heated sport steering wheel and the sport chrono stopwatch in the upper part of the dashboard. The door entry guards come in black aluminium as standard and feature a McCann T logo. If you're able to move up to a 2.9 litre V6 engined Macan, the exterior giveaways differentiating the Macan S and the Macan GTS from the four cylinder models are primarily the red brake calipers and the two twin tailpipes on each side at the rear. The Macan S has the same 20 inch wheels as the Macan T, but this GTS gets larger 21 inch RS Spider design, matte black rims and gains three important extra dynamic features. A switchable sports exhaust system, sports air suspension lowered by 10 millimetres and a GTS specific version of the PASM or Porsche Active Suspension Management setup. The GTS also gets specific sports seats plus a GTS leather interior with Alcantara style race techs upholstery finishing. As you'd expect from Porsche, there are plenty of extra cost features, which we'll try to guide you through now. Now, arguably the most important thing to source out on your Macan is the suspension. As an alternative to standard passive damping, you can specify the brand's excellent PASM, or Porsche Active Suspension Management System, which offers comfort, sport and sport plus chassis settings to vary the ride from cosseting to clinically precise. Or you can go further and opt for adaptive air suspension, which offers the same selectable modes and takes ride comfort up another level. Plus, the full air system drops the car at speed, can raise it off-road and provides the chance to lower the boot level for easier luggage loading. The other optional dynamic extra that many customers tend to add is PTV Plus, the Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus package that works through the twisty stuff to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. PTV Plus also delivers a perceptible gain in traction when accelerating out of tight bends by locking the differential. If you're the sort of person likely to appreciate that, then you'll probably also want to tick the box for the Sport Chrono package, which costs another £700 or so, and will be a feature that buyers will be looking for when the time comes to sell this car on. This gives you launch control for F1-style getaways, a dash top stopwatch and a steering wheel mounted mode switch for the various driving settings, in the centre of which is a sport response button that gives you a short-term blast of engine response that will be useful in tight overtaking manoeuvres. We'd also want the sports exhaust system and, if we were urban-based, we consider the Power Steering Plus package that reduces steering effort when manoeuvring and at low speeds. Lighting is another area that you might want to embellish. Add in the PDLS Plus Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus setup to the full LED headlamps and you'll get a package that dynamically adapts the main beam function and includes a junction light function. McCann customers can also add in a heated windscreen, the GT Sport steering wheel from the 911, and an ionizer that reduces germs and other pollutants from the airflow. 
we'd want to think about the audio system too, possibly in terms of an upgrade to the 14-speaker 665-watt Bose setup that we've been trying here. But ideally, to the 1,000-watt Burmester 16-speaker setup, though that costs the best part of £3,500. Another important option is the laminated glass with enhanced thermal and noise insulation package, which blocks almost 100% of harmful UV rays from entering the cabin. The optional rear side window sun blinds will also help you here. And you can specify a two-part panoramic glass roof and roof rails. As you can see, we've got those here. You may also want Porsche entry and drive keyless entry, which includes an ignition starter switch. There's also an optional reversing camera, a cabin ionizer, a heated windscreen, a heated steering wheel, and also dipping for the interior and exterior mirrors. Or you could go further and get the park assist with surround view package that gives you an infotainment screen, bird's eye view from four individual cameras to help with parking and maneuvering. As for going further, well, let's start with customization. Now, Porsche offers a sport design package available either with or without unique side skirts, which includes a bespoke front and rear apron design with these elements, along with the roof spoiler and the rear midsection, all finished in body color. You can order the side skirts separately, and if desired, all these elements can be alternatively finished in high gloss black paint. That high gloss black finish can also be optionally applied to the door handles, the side window trims and the side flank side blades. The side window trims can also be specified in aluminium and the side blades can also be finished in carbon, silver or body colour as an alternative to the standard lava black finish. More dark-themed optional exterior elements include rear privacy glass and the tint that's been applied to this car's LED headlamps. You can also apply a tint to the tail lights. The optional sports tailpipes can also be finished in black. The fuel filler cap can have an aluminium look finish and the rear apron can be had with a bespoke painted midsection. You're probably going to want to upgrade the wheels too. There are various 19, 20 or 21 inch rim options. We've got 21 inch RS Spider Design matte black rims here. And as an option, the Porsche Crest can be added into the wheel centres. And you can even have your vehicle key painted and supplied in a leather pouch. Bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to have to pay extra for your choice of paintwork. Straightforward black or white shades are the only ones that come as standard. Most buyers choose from the range of optional metallic shades. We've got papaya metallic here, but there are also three further special colours if you're happy to spend more. For the inside, there are, of course, lots of extra cost interior packages in full leather or extended leather, which extends the leather finish into the dash and the doors. Or you could choose a cabin trimmed in either high gloss black, wood, carbon, aluminium or our favourite, race techs, a kind of Alcantara, which can be extended to the roof lining and the interior grab handles. The steering wheel can be finished in Alcantara, carbon, dark walnut or anthracite chestnut. The door sill guards can be carbon or aluminium trimmed, illuminated and personalised with a logo on request. And the PDK gear selector can be trimmed in aluminium. It's annoying that the front seats don't get lumbar support unless you pay over £1,000 more for the 14-way electric front seat package, which includes memory settings. Now, if you're going to stretch to that, you might as well pay a fraction more and get yourself the adaptive sports seats with 18-way powered adjustment. The front seats can be ordered with cooled ventilation and both the rear seats and the steering wheel can be heated on request. You can also add a compass display on the dashboard and a smoking package if you haven't kicked the habit. Whatever your decision, don't forget to set it all off with the comfort lighting package, which bathes the whole interior in a delicious LED nighttime glow. One of the nice things about not having a fully digitalised instrument cluster is that you can bespoke colour the dials in either beige, red or white with the same colours available to you if you've got the central stopwatch dial that comes with the Sport Chrono Pack. The seat belts can be had in espresso beige, red or a choice of greys. The front and rear seats 
can have an embossed Porsche crest, and that crest can also be embossed onto the front centre console armrest, or a McCann model logo if you prefer. Personalised leather-edged floor mats are available, and you can add stitched leather to the steering column casing, the sun visors and the interior grab handles. If you want something even more bespoke, then you'll be able to order it through the Porsche exclusive programme. As for practical stuff, well, you might want to look at either stainless steel skid plates and running boards, or we'd want the larger 75-litre fuel tank, only standard on this top GTS version. And you can also specify various car covers, loading sill protection film, a cool bag and a fire extinguisher. As you'd expect, there's the option of an electrically extending tow bar and you can add black aluminium roof rails in silver, matte or black as part of a roof transport system. On that subject, you can specify various sizes of roof box, a bicycle rack, a racing bike carrier and a holder for skis and snowboards. For the inside, you might want all-weather floor mats or a rear footrest. An optional storage package gives you a storage compartment under the front seats, front seat-back storage pockets and a storage net for the boot. For that cargo area, we'd want the load space management system that enables you to partition the luggage space to suit your needs. As part of this, items are held in place by a rail system with a slide-adjustable telescopic rod, a strap roller and four variable lashing eyelets. Plus, there's a reversible boot mat that you can flip over for muddy boots. That latter feature can be personalised and ordered separately. If money's really no object, there's a bespoke leather luggage set offered if you've got over £5,000 to spend on it. On to safety. Now, the McCann is the only Porsche to ever have been tested by Euro NCAP. It gained a five-star result from that organisation at original launch, but it wouldn't get that if tested now because, rather incredibly, for a car of this price, there still isn't any sort of autonomous braking system fitted as standard, which isn't really acceptable in this day and age. You get it only if you pay extra for an improved adaptive cruise control system that can slow you right down to a stop and start you off again. You can embellish adaptive cruise control with Porsche's traffic jam assist setup, which can also take over steering in slow moving traffic, which might make your urban commute a lot easier. That's the closest the McCann currently gets to any kind of autonomous driving capability. We're equally surprised to find other common camera safety systems relegated to the options list. Things like lane keeping assist, which stops you from drifting over delineating lines on the highway. Lane change assist, which stops you from dangerously pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And a speed limit indicator, which pictures speed limit signs and displays them on the dash. Of course, all the more conventional stuff is also well covered. Every McCann features the POSIP, or Porsche Side Impact Protection System, that builds in side impact protection elements into the doors and includes thorax airbags integrated onto the side bolster of each front seat. There are also twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a knee bag for the driver. Further rear side bags are optional, and both outer rear chairs have Isofix mounts, and all models, of course, feature ABS anti-lock brakes, PTM, or Porsche Traction Management Traction Control, tyre pressure monitoring, and an active bonnet that'll reduce pedestrian injuries should you hit someone. There's also PHC, or Porsche Hill Control, to ease you down slippery slopes. Porsche has plenty of electrified powertrain technology, but it's saving most of it for the next generation version of this car, which will be built on a platform capable of sustaining full electric mobility. The sort of thing that was merely a pipe dream when the chassis of this current McCann was designed well over a decade ago. So there are limitations here that Porsche's more recently designed larger models don't have, which shouldn't concern a typical McCann buyer very much, someone more likely to be bothered about potent performance than pretentious plugging in. Given that 40% of European sales of the original version of this car went to diesel variants, you can only admire the boldness of Zuffenhausen's decision to dump diesel power for this model as early as it did back in 2018. 
The company's plan back then was to encourage black pump fuel refugees to switch to the entry-level four-cylinder, two-litre petrol engine, which seemed to us a touch hopeful back in 2018 and still does. The last time we tested a Macan diesel, its combined cycle fuel economy was quoted at 46.3 mpg. The base two-litre petrol-powered Macan and Macan T models officially achieve up to 28 mpg, a figure admittedly compiled using stricter WLTP cycle criteria, but still a way away from what you'd get from any diesel, however you look at it. The WLTP-rated CO2 figure for the two-litre model is a best of up to 228 grams per kilometre. These readings are for some reason way off what this engine delivers in other Volkswagen Group models. In an Audi Q5 Sportback 45, TFSI Quattro for instance, an identical version of this same power plant delivers bests of 33.6 mpg and 192 grams per kilometre. Still, you can be pretty sure that this four-cylinder unit is as efficient as a power plant of this size is ever going to get, tweaked in recent times to comply with the current Euro 6D temp emissions regulations, which have meant the need for the addition of a particulate filter. There's also demand-based coolant pump control, which helps the engine, and the catalytic converters reach their optimum operating temperature more quickly. And there's an auto start-stop system that switches off the engine as you coast to a stop rather than when you actually come to a halt. By the way, in quoting fuel figures, we've used the phrase up to because the larger wheel rim sizes many owners will want will have an effect on those returns that could be up to around 5%. Because Porsche no longer offers its 3-litre V6 engine in the mid-range Macan S, there's now very little difference between the returns of that S model and the top GTS variant we're trying here, because both have basically the same 2.9-litre twin-turbo V6 unit. For the record, the Macan S delivers best returns of up to 25.4 mpg and 251 grams per kilometre, while this GTS manages bests of 25 mpg and 255 grams per kilometre. All of which is about the most you can expect, given that a typical Macan weighs about 1.9 tonnes. That's despite the use of aluminium body panels that Porsche says pair 40 kilos from the car's curb weight. Also intended to optimise efficiency is the slippery body shape, aided by an active radiator grille shutter that closes to aid aerodynamics when cooling isn't needed. If you specify adaptive cruise control, further efficiency gains can be made via a coasting mode added into the PDK Auto gearbox, which seamlessly disconnects the engine from the transmission at a cruise. Most Macan models get a 65-litre fuel tank. There's a larger 75-litre fitted to this GTS model, which you can pay extra for with the other derivatives. A major Macan buying incentive lies with this car's impressively high, likely residual values. When this car was originally launched, buyers were running their cars for 12 months and selling them on for pretty much what they'd paid for them. It's obviously not quite like that now, but this car still leads its competitors in this regard by a handsome margin. Over three years and 36,000 miles, expect a Macan to hold on to 10 percentage points more of its value than an equivalent Jaguar F-Pace, for instance. Independent experts predict a residual value of 68% for a 2-litre version of this Porsche in this period, which is deeply impressive. For this top GTS model, it'll be 66% in the same time span, while the depreciation leader is the Macan S, which retains 71% of its list price over this period. On the downside, because of the high upfront price of this car, it'll face the higher premium road tax rate of £490 for the first five years of ownership after the initially CO2-weighted payment that's rolled into the on-the-road price. The BIK rate is 37%. Included as part of purchase is the usual three-year warranty, though this one laudably doesn't come with any mileage limitations. This package can be extended by either one or two further years on request. McCann owners also get a three-year breakdown recovery package, a three-year paint warranty and a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. Service intervals are every 20,000 miles or every two years, whichever comes first, 
Insurance for the Macan is Group 41E, it's 44E for the Macan T, 45E for the V6 Macan S and 47E for this V6 Macan GTS. Oh, and if you want to justify purchase of this car to green-minded friends, it's always useful to know that at the end of its life, it'll be 95% recyclable. This combustion engine Macan will end its production run as competitive in its class as it was when it was launched, and that's a huge achievement. Porsche's marketing slogan for it, Life Intensified, has always suited this model because it really has intensified the whole concept of what an SUV can be. Cars of this kind, even sporting ones, are almost always born out of compromise. They might sometimes look the part, but sheer weight and size have to tell somewhere. Those issues affect a Macan too, but far less significantly than you might ever have imagined was possible with this class of car. If you need five seats, decent luggage space, and go anywhere versatility, but secretly still crave that little sports car or hot hatch you used to love so much, you still can't think of anything better to recommend as a day-to-day -day choice for someone on a premium budget. The final set of revisions made here were never going to convert anyone who didn't already want a Macan, but for the many who'd like one very much indeed, these last updates have made this car even more desirable. Some rivals have more sophisticated infotainment, and most of them include more camera-driven safety kit as standard. We're not sure these last visual updates really improve the look, and we wish it wasn't so expensive, realistically, what you're going to be paying here is the kind of money you'd have to find for a luxury SUV from the next size up. Otherwise, though, we continue to like this Porsche very much indeed. This is still the car all its rivals would like to be. And at the time of this test, it was still the car most buyers in this segment aspire to have. There are, it's true, more efficient or more spacious choices in this sector. Some premium mid-sized SUVs are better equipped or will take you further off-road. And almost all will cost slightly less. For all that, though, this is an addictive package. A segment-defining car and a very desirable thing indeed. The new electric version will have to be very, very good to better the benchmark laid down here. Perhaps nothing in this class ever will.